Hi, my name is Brendan O'Keefe and I am a postgraduate research student uh, in the Department of Physical Education and Sports Science at the University of Limerick. The title of my thesis is the development and evaluation of a fitness test battery and web-based platform for monitoring key indicators of adolescent health in school settings. So I'd like to acknowledge my supervisory team of Professor Alan Donnelly and Dr. Kieran McDonagh for their guidance at each phase of my thesis. And I also want to acknowledge both my internal external examiner and chair for facilitating this exam during these difficult times. So to begin, just to provide an overview of what I will discuss over the course of the next couple of minutes. So I'll begin by providing a, an overview of the aim and objectives of my thesis before outlining uh, the rationale for conducting the thesis from both a health and educational perspective. I'll then discuss each of the three key phases of the project, phase one development, phase two feasibility, and phase three evaluation, before outlining some of the scholarly and non-scholarly platforms used to disseminate my research. And finally, then I will look at some of the uh, impacts my research has uh, uh, before addressing some of the potential uh, directions for future research. So the overall aim of my thesis was to develop a pedagogically sound and scientifically rigorous system for monitoring health related fitness in school settings. And in order to achieve this, we set about um, achieving seven key objectives. So firstly, we wanted to conduct an, a review of health related physical fitness monitoring practices in schools in the Republic of Ireland. We wanted to develop a field based test battery, which was entitled Youth Fit, suitable for administration during timetable physical education classes. We then wanted to design a web-based application to facilitate monitoring health-related fitness and the transfer of this data to uh, an anonymized, centrally hosted database. The fourth objective focused on determining the reliability of the peer-facilitated student-centered approach that we used. And then we wanted to conduct an expansion study involving a randomized and stratified sample of schools in the mid and southwest region of Ireland. Second last objective focus on conducting the first multi-component examination of health related fitness levels among Irish adolescents. And finally then to evaluate the feasibility of the youth fit test battery and software platform for monitoring health related fitness in school settings. So prior to getting into the details of the research, we felt there's a very strong rationale from both a health and educational perspective for conducting this research. So firstly, from a health perspective, uh, the components of health related physical fitness, namely cardiorespiratory endurance, musculoskeletal fitness, body composition and flexibility, have recently emerged as among the most powerful predictors of future health in youth. However, despite World Health Organization recommendations, and unlike many countries internationally, including the United States, Russia, China and several countries across Europe, the Republic of Ireland lacks a clearly specified strategy for monitoring health related physical fitness. Then from an educational uh, purpose, uh, rationale, all physical education curricula at secondary school level in Ireland require that students be able to learn how to improve uh, and how to monitor and improve their health related physical fitness through school based physical education. So therefore, we very much saw my project as an opportunity to bridge the gap between the latest evidence based science uh, and practice within school settings. So in order to achieve the, the, the overall thesis, then we use the development framework developed by uh, the Medical Research Council and Craig and colleagues in, in 2008. So this development framework comprised four phases, three of which were the focus of, of my thesis. So phase one development included uh, identifying an evidence base and establishing an actual evidence of need. Uh, phase two focused on the feasibility or expansion. So looking at testing procedures and delivering the test battery in, 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 in the randomized, uh, randomized sample of schools. And phase three then uh, evalu evaluation was uh, focused on assessing the overall effectiveness of, of, of the project. The fourth phase of the MRC framework implementation included a longitudinal dimension, which was not part of my thesis. So we then, uh, myself and my supervisors then set about achieving um, uh, um, or developing rather a systematic plan in order to actually develop the youth fit um, project uh, test battery and web based platform. So using the Medical Research Council framework, we uh, uh, set about achieving the following eight steps. So phase one comprised of five steps, which was a national survey of monitoring practices. Step two focused on a literature review and the actual selection of the youth fit test items. 
Stage uh, step three then focused on uh, the development of the UFIT software platform. Step four was uh, focused on the test battery and, and software manuals. And the final stage of our final step, rather, phase one, focused on establishing the reliability of the student centered peer assist approach. Phase two, then the feasibility or expansion phase comprised of two steps, um, uh, namely the, for, uh, the feasibility stage one, which included school recruitment and training, and the feasibility stage two, which focused on test battery administration. And the final phase three, then evaluation comprised of one step, which was an overall uh, evaluation of the project in general. And we used uh, an established uh, evaluation framework developed by Orson and Cohen for evaluating uh, feasibility studies. So um, I will now talk you through each of these eight steps and the key research outputs to emerge from them. So phase one, step one, the National Survey of Health Related Fitness Monitoring Practices in Schools. So this survey was administered or completed rather by 327 PE teachers from 235 schools representing uh, just over one third of all schools in the Republic of Ireland. So for the, for the purposes of brevity, I'll focus on some of the key findings that emerged from the survey. Overall, 95% of teachers use fitness tests as part of their pre programme, so it was highly prevalent. However, over half, 52% discard the test results after a single use and less than one third of teachers shared results with uh, their students' parents. We also observed a significant decline in testing frequency from junior cycles, so years one to three of second level, to senior cycles, years four to six. As can be observed in the graph in the bottom right corner, there was also um, the, the component of cardiovascular fitness was, was assessed almost twice as much as any other component of related fitness. And finally then, in terms of establishing an evidence of need, 87% of teachers indicated that they were in favour of developing a digital platform to facilitate monitoring health-related fitness in uh, their PE programmes. So a more comprehensive overview of this survey has been published in the Journal of Teaching Physical Education in January of this year. Phase one, step two then, the development of the Youth Fit Test Battery. So this focused very much on conducting a literature review of the latest evidence base in terms of uh, the latest research on health-related fitness and field-based testing. And two key sources or two key um, uh, uh, tests or texts were identified in the fitness measures and health outcomes in youth, published by the Institute of Medicine in the United States in 2013, and the Pan-European Alpha Project Assessing Levels of Physical Activity in Europe. So this was a fitness test battery uh, uh, developed specifically uh, for uh, establishing a standardised approach to monitoring health-related fitness uh, in all of Europe. So our youth fit test battery then, building on this latest evidence base, uh, comprised of the high priority units within the alpha test battery, namely the 20 meter shuttle run, BMI, 4 by 10 meter shuttle run, and grip strength and standing broad jump, plus, plus four additional test items, some of which were identified in the fitness measures and health outcomes in youth, or that were commonly administered in health surveys uh, of, of uh, yeah, physical fitness in youth, namely the sit and reach test, uh, push up, plank hold and blood pressure. So phase one, step three then, the youth fit software infrastructure overview. So the focus of uh, step three was to develop a software platform to facilitate tracking HRPF on a centrally hosted database in collaboration with our project partners, I'm here. So multi-site data capture technology developed by our project partners was identified as the most suitable platform to pursue the development of the web-based solution. This enabled data from uh, multiple schools to be inputted and hosted on a secured server, uh, which was hosted at the University of Limerick. So to briefly talk through uh, the, 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 the software and how it was uh, built. So as system administrator, I created school and teacher profiles for all 20 schools and then monitored the software platform providing system support for necessary. Following this, all participants who provided consent were uploaded to the system by the school administrator, usually the PE teacher or school secretary, and this was done using what was called a bulk import routine that automatically associated the student with uh, their teacher and the school that they were in. And finally then, once the youth fit test battery had been completed, teachers inputted uh, student scores to the web-based platform, and this data was then um, uh, transferred in an anonymized form to the centrally hosted database at the University of Limerick. 
So a detailed overview of uh, these uh, application and the overall software platform is beyond the scope of this presentation. However, I've developed video tutorials on each application, which are available at the links below on YouTube and were also available in chapter four of my thesis. So moving on then to phase one, step four. The focus of, of, of step four was the development of the Youth for Teachers resource pack. And the resource pack, which was provided to all 20 participating schools, comprised of a test battery, measuring kits, um, hard, a hard copy of the teacher's guidance manual and also a hard copy of a, a guidance manual designed specifically for the student administrators, uh, a large A2 test protocol poster displays, as, as you can see in the image in the top right corner there. Um, so the, the, the guidance manual itself was a 70 page guidance manual and it's presented in appendix A of my thesis. And this included a detailed theoretical underpinning for each test. Also, details of the small group peer facilitated test administration uh, and sequencing procedure were provided. So the test battery was administered in small groups of six students or less per station. And each station had a senior student facilitator who explained and demonstrated their assigned test. And finally then, a comprehensive software user guide that detailed the procedure for uploading uh, and inputting students' results to the online platform was also provided in the teacher's guidance manual. The final phase or the final step rather of phase one was focused on establishing the reliability of uh, the student assessed approach that we used in this study. So we used a two group uh, study design um, which uh, uh, essentially involved randomly assigning students into an eight peer assessed group or an eight person research uh, assistant assessed group. And both the research assistance assess group and the peer assess group this, um, uh, assessed at the same time during timetable physical education uh, on two weeks apart in the exact same sequence, all students completed tests. So just to brief, provide a brief overview of some of the absolutes and, and um, relative reliability indices that uh, uh, we found. Overall, interclass correlation coefficients were very high for both the student assess group and the research assistant assess group. There was no statistically significant differences found between test and retest measures uh, in either group, with the exception of systolic blood pressure from the student assess group and um, uh, the 90 degree push up for the research assess group. And finally, then in terms of an absolute measure uh, and the coefficient of variation, uh, so values, uh, surprisingly enough, the coefficient, uh, the mean coefficient of variation was actually marginally lower for the student assess group at 6.5% in comparison to the research assistant group at 6.8%. Uh, so the results of this study were published in January of this year and as of last week are actually available open access in the uh, Journal of Pediatric and Exercise Science. And the uh, conclusion here is highlighted at the bottom states that this study demonstrates that following familiarization training, student assistant health related fitness tests in school based physical education programs can be considered reliable. So moving on to phase two then and step six. So one of the most important milestones of my PhD was achieved in March of last year when we completed our 20 school randomized expansion phase. So this uh, incorporated 20 schools, 1,215 students, 34 teachers, and the schools were stratified for socioeconomic status, so designated disadvantage and non-disadvantage, gender, single sex boys, single sex girls, and mixed sex schools, and location, so rural and urban schools. So in each of the 20 schools, a three hour workshop was provided to both uh, cooperating PE teachers and the eight selected senior student facilitators uh, in which all test items on the test pad were explained and test familiarization trials were conducted. And again, as mentioned in the previous slide, Following the administration of the test battery in each of the 20 schools, results were uploaded to the YouthFit software platform where they were made available for analysis. So uh, a detailed overview of the, the HRPF profile is beyond the scope of this presentation. So I've decided to focus on two of the most significant findings to emerge. So firstly, uh, in terms of the disparity, one of the most significant findings was the extent of the disparity found between students in designated disadvantaged schools and non-designated disadvantaged schools. And we used what's called a linear mixed model uh, as presented here in the clustered error bar mean graph. So the linear mixed models enables you to control for random and fixed effects and using school as a random effects and gender and age as a fixed effect, we were able to see that students in designated disadvantaged schools score 
scored significantly poorer across the vast majority of test items, namely body mass index, the 20 meter shot run, uh, hand grip strength, and standing broad jump. Therefore, we concluded that future interventions designed